Hey guys, okay, so if you have smelly, uh, rotten egg smell water in your house, this could be the video for you uh, and the solution to that. Um, especially if the smell has developed recently, like in the last like, month, couple weeks, that type of thing. And you haven't had issues with sulfur in your water before and you're like, where's the smell coming from? So just to give you a little bit of background, my story on this is uh, my water started to smell. I had like that rotten egg smell. Never had an issue with sulfur in the well before. All my systems like three, four years old. So hasn't been messed with in any way. Uh, I have a water softener, but that's it. And then the water just comes through like a basic particle filter into the, into the hot water tank, into the house. So we were having smelly water. So I messaged, and I was getting kind of sick of it. I messaged uh, one of my friends who's in the water technology uh, trade. And I was like, what do you think this is? Like, do, I, do we have water in the, or sulfur in the water well all of a sudden? Like what's causing this? And he mentioned something I hadn't thought of until he said it. And he said, is it just coming from the hot water? And so I ran the hot water and it was like considerably, definitely coming from the, the hot water and none coming from the cold water. So that's why you could smell it so bad in the shower because basically it's steamy, it's warm, using more warm water than cold water. So you're really getting that smell coming out of the hot water tank. So he gave me a recommendation to shock the hot water tank to kill the bacteria I'll get into the science of what's causing the smell, but to kill the bacteria in the tank causing the smell. So he just said to use chlorine bleach, which I did. So a couple cups of chlorine bleach, like household bleach, uh, in your water filter. So I just put it in the water filter and that's basically your access to the incoming water of the house, the easiest way. Um, so I took the water filter off, dumped in a couple cups of chlorine bleach, put it back on, ran the hot water somewhere in the house, just at the sink here is what I did. And basically the water and chlorine ble bleach mixture from the well went down into the tank and I let it mix with the hot water in this 50 gallon hot water tank. And that worked, like it killed whatever bacteria was causing the smell. Um, so I wanna do a little bit more research like how to stop this from happening in the future. Like I want like a, a fix for this cause it's gonna clearly happen again cause you basically you're shocking it but something is causing this to happen. So what is causing it to happen is uh, water has bacteria in it. Like it just does. So it's, and, and, less, and I mean mine goes through a UV filter but at the end of the day, bacteria still manages to get into the tank. And in this case, the, the bacteria we're talking about is anaerobic bacteria that reacts with the magnesium or aluminum anode in your hot water tank. So every hot water tank has a, a metal anode. It screws into the top usually of the hot water tank and it's a tubular piece of metal. Like I said, magnesium or aluminum. Uh, screws in the top of the tank into the water and the, wa the electrons in the tank that would normally corrode or the process of corrosion of your hot water tank, the electrons would uh, corrode the lining of the tank but with this anode, they corrode that first. So it's, it's, that's why it's called a sacrificial anode because it corrodes before the lining of your tank corrodes. It helps your tank last a lot longer than it normally would. Um, the problem is when this anaerobic bacteria reacts with magnesium and especially aluminum, aluminum's worse, it creates hydrogen sulfide gas. Hydrogen sulfide gas is what is actually making the smell. So I knew that after I shocked the tank and after who knows, months, weeks, whatever, the smell would eventually come back because I've not done anything to actually solve the problem of the anode. Um, and this is a fairly new tank. So this anode is only like a couple of years old. So it is, it should be good. We're going to pull it out and I'm going to show you guys and we'll see. But um, one way to fix this problem sort of more permanently is to change the type of anode they have in your tank. So you can go with a, uh, aluminum zinc anode and zinc is the key there because uh, it won't react as as sort of aggressively with zinc and you won't get the hydrogen sulfide gas like it'll still happen but you just won't notice it in your water as much so that is one option however if you have a uh, water softener in your water system before it gets the hot water tank which it usually does then if, if so if you're familiar with how uh, water softeners work. At the end of the day, they use salt to clean the water, uh, soften the water, but there's still a minute amount of salt left in that water that is used in your house. And if any of you live in like cold climates, when they put salt, salt on the roads, your car rusts faster than with just plain water because electrons are able to move through salt water easier than they are through just plain water. So basically the anode in your tank corrodes faster 
because you have a little bit of salt water. So even using the, the aluminum zinc anode, uh, it helps, but because you have essentially a little bit of salt water in your tank, it will corrode faster, and then you'll have that hydrogen sulfide gas happening again. So I was like, okay, so what do we do now? Like, there's, is there any way to actually fix this? So I found this product here. So uh, it's called Coral Protect, and this isn't like a paid thing. I just did a lot of research and ended up with this one. So this is an electric anode. So this actually does not corrode. It actively uh, puts electricity into the water and stops your tank from corroding. Cause you never, like if you just took your anode out, your, your smell problem would be gone. Like it, it, there'd be no issue, but you don't want to do that because it will corrode your tank eventually and you'll have to replace your tank in a few years, especially if you're on softened water. Uh, so this adds electrons. Uh, you, we literally are going to plug it in and you leave it plugged in. It uses like no electricity. Like it's, it's like undetectable uh, how little electricity uses. And so it introduces uh, electricity into the water and acts the same way the anode does, protecting your tank, but it doesn't cause the hydrogen sulfide gas to be created. So this is essentially a cure for this entire problem. Only thing, it's a little bit more expensive. So if you're looking for, the immediate solution is shock the tank with hydrogen peroxide or bleach. The next solution for you, if you did not have uh, a softener, but even if you did have a softener, you could switch your anode to uh, aluminum zinc. But then if it's still, you, you're getting that smell back, you want to go with an electric anode. And again, this is just one brand. There's lots of them out there. Uh, this one just happened to be the easiest for me to obtain. So we're going to get into actually doing that. And I mean, you can just end the video here. That's the explanation for what's going on. But uh, we're actually going to change the anode in this tank to this electric one. And yeah, let's do it. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is just shut your hot water tank off. So I'm just going to switch to off there. There'll be a number of different ways uh, to do this. So just uh, look at your manual. But usually it'll look like this. Okay, so next what you're going to do is shut off the main water supply to your home. And I just opened up a hot water tap here. And I opened up a hot water tap upstairs just to drain any remaining water out of the lines. Okay, so next you're going to want to drain a couple of gallons of water out of your tank. The anode's in the top, so if the tank's full of water and you take the anode out, a little bit's going to try and leak out. So you can put a hose on this to a sump pump or sump pump tank, or you can just take out a couple of gallons like this. Some will have a knob, some you'll have to put a screwdriver in. And there will still be some pressure on this, so uh, just be careful, it is hot water. Okay, that should be good. Dump that down the sink. Okay, so now you're gonna come to where your tank has your anode in the top. Mine says anode right here, and there's a little cap on it that says anode. It'll be just on there like that and they even cut out the blower here so you can access it. So these are usually an inch and a sixteenth uh, nut, which requires an inch and a sixteenth socket. My inch and a sixteenth socket is uh, being used right now, but this 27 millimeter one will work. I've got it on a 18 inch or 24 inch long um, ratchet head. And so we're gonna take that out now. Get it on there. So it'll be uh, counterclockwise to loosen. And it's gonna take some force to break it open because I mean, there'll be some corrosion. And you're just gonna slowly turn it out. gonna use some pliers to grab it. I'm just gonna get my hand in there. So this will be pretty typical of what they look like. There'll be some corrosion. Okay, so we'll just take our new anode here, the electric anode out of the box. And you'll see this is what it looks like. 
So stainless steel body, this will actually stick out of your tank, whereas before the nut would have been right here. And there's the uh, sort of electrode, if you want to call it, and there's the terminal on the top that the uh, cord will go on to. So first thing we're going to do is going to put some Teflon tape on this to create a seal. And you're always going to want to spin your Teflon tape on in the direction that you're going to be threading it in. So in this case, it's going to be clockwise to thread it in. Be good. Make sure it's on there nice. And then we're just gonna make sure our the hole here is cleaned out. And then we're gonna thread this in. Always start the threads by hand. Okay, and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so to tighten it, you can either use a, like an open end wrench, uh, inch and 3 16 socket, or I'm gonna use this 30 millimeter uh, socket here. So we're gonna tighten it down. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. You don't wanna break anything, just use common sense. I do not know the exact spec for it. Okay, that feels good. Okay, so now we're gonna take our adapter. Here it is here. And the other end, right here. So you've got one end with a little terminal and one end with a push connector. So we're gonna put the push connector on this terminal, just like that. And then you're gonna find a screw. This is actually a grounding wire. You're gonna find a screw on the side of your tank. So I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna ground it right there. Just like that, and then we're just gonna plug this in. Green light on there shows you it's on and working. And now we're just gonna turn the water back on and the gas or electric to the heater to start heating the water back up. Always turn your water on nice and slow until the pipes fill up and the tank fills up. Once you don't hear any more hissing, just open it up all the way. We're gonna turn our heater back on. And that's it guys. So hopefully that helps a lot of people out, get rid of your smelly water and solve the problem permanently. Um, so biggest thing too is just check for leaks around the anode there. Um, check it right now and then check it, you know, in a few hours just to make sure it's all good. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go. So if you got any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, otherwise, have a nice day.